one second. So the state officers are gonna start the meeting with opening ceremony. So Jaden, you can go ahead and take it away. We will now be holding this week's, the meeting hall will come to order. We will now be holding this week's Louisiana Ag Teachers Meeting. Mr. Vice President, are all officers at their stations? I shall call the roll of officers, determine if they are at their stations, and report back to you, Madam President. The Sentinel. Stationed by the door. Your duties there. Through this door pass many friends of the FFA. It is my duty to see that the door is open to our friends at all times and that they are welcome. I care for the meeting room and paraphernalia. I strive to keep the room comfortable and assist the president in maintaining order. The reporter. The reporter is stationed by the flag. Why by the flag? As the flag covers the United States of America, so I strive to inform the people in order that every man, woman, and child may know that the FFA is a national organization that reaches from the state of Alaska to the Virgin Islands and from the state of Maine to Hawaii. The treasurer. Station at the Emblem of Washington. Your duties there. I keep a record of receipts and disbursements just as Washington kept his farm accounts, carefully and accurately. I encourage thrift among the members and strive to build up our financial standing through savings and investments. George Washington was better able to serve his country because he was financially independent. The secretary. Station by the ear of corn. Your duties there. I keep an accurate record of all meetings and correspond with other secretaries wherever corn is grown and FFA members meet. The parliamentarian. Stationed by a copy of Robert's Rules of Order. Your duties there. I assist the secretary in maintaining accurate records and answer any and all questions pertaining to parliamentary procedure, which may arise during a business meeting or session. The advisor. Here by the owl. Why are you stationed by the owl? The owl is a time honored emblem of knowledge and wisdom. Being older than the rest of you, I'm asked to advise you from time to time as the need arises. I hope that my advice will always be based on true knowledge and ripen with wisdom. Mr. Vice President, why do you keep a plow at your station? The plow is a symbol of labor and tillage of the soil. Without labor, neither knowledge nor wisdom can accomplish much. My duties require me to assist in directing the work of our organization. I preside over meetings in the absence of our president, whose place is beneath the rising sun. Why is the president so stationed? The rising sun is a token of new era in agriculture. If we follow the leadership of our president, we shall be led out of the darkness of selfishness and into the glorious sunlight of brotherhood and cooperation. Madam President, all officers are at their stations. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. The secretary will disperse with the roll call. FFA members, why are we here? To practice brotherhood, honor agricultural opportunities and responsibilities, and develop those qualities of leadership which an FFA membership possess. May we accomplish our purposes. I now declare this meeting duly open for the transaction of business or attention to any matters which may properly be presented. Good morning, everyone. And on behalf of the Louisiana State Officers, we would like to thank you so much for allowing us to do this today on this call. We know you have been working so hard to make sure everything is working well within our state, and we are so proud of everything you're doing. The State Officers and I are working incredibly hard to make sure that we're keeping not only students involved, but also our teachers as well. And once again, we just want to thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you, Jaden. Is my sound working better now? Much better. Okay. We're on the road back from, from uh, filming a video, so I went through a rough patch there. So I've got an agenda today, um, pretty simple agenda to keep me from leaving anyone out. And I'd like to start with Mr. Jerry Boyce with a short report on foundation progress during this COVID-19 situation.
Do we have Mr. Boyce out there? Do y'all hear me okay, uh, FFA? I can hear you, Jerry. Okay, wonderful. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for giving me the time uh, to participate in a little bit of a report from our foundation. <laughs> the um, Louisiana FFA Foundation has, um, has done a good job engaging our board. We uh, have 11 out of our 13 voting board members uh, have participated in giving this year uh, through our campaign at the state level. We, uh, I'm happy to account for the pledging and the uh, accounted gifts being 34% higher uh, from the board's giving. And, and that's, uh, that is very good. At the um, LATA level or the Ag Teacher Association, uh, at the statewide level, we have a 26% giving ratio, and I venture to say that that's somewhere in the 50 to 100% giving ratio when you account for individual chapters. Uh, everybody's giving of their time. Uh, many are giving of their treasure, and we really appreciate that at the foundation level. Uh, I, I do want to remind everyone uh, there are a couple ways to give back to your state association uh, during this time where we are um, under quarantine. Uh, two easiest ways might be to, um, to consider a pledge or a gift via PayPal or to um, go to smile.amazon.com if you're ordering uh, any of your groceries, any of your toilet paper, <laughs> and any of the things that you might buy on Amazon, if you'll select the Louisiana Future Farmers of America as your, <clears throat> uh, as your nonprofit donate T, you can uh, give 1% of your Amazon order by smile.amazon.com back to the Louisiana Association. Uh, another way in which we have, uh, will receive funding is if, um, in, in the interim, if you decide to register your car through the Louisiana Officer Motor Vehicles, you can get an FFA license plate and we will receive the proceeds from that. Those are two very helpful ways in which you can give back to your foundation and support your FFA membership um, in, the, in the interim. We are uh, we are trying to go ahead in this in this tough time and contact everybody in um, the uh, corporate world and let them know that our um, that our state convention will be postponed until the first week of August. Uh, there is still hopes to include a state convention expo uh, area for the businesses uh, on the date of August fourth. So that is something that we are in constant uh, contact with our uh, donors and our past participants to uh, make them aware of. Another, um, another thing that has come up in the last month has been uh, on the national level, you may have received a community impact report, uh, an annual report via the uh, National FFA Foundation. Well, at the state level, we also have sent out a copy of a state impact report. Uh, that went out the first week in April. So uh, a lot of you may have those uh, waiting for you at your home chapter at the school level. Uh, some of you, about 50% may have received one in your home mail. Uh, I'm happy to report that that has been uh, produced. The, uh, the last thing that I'll say on behalf of the foundation is um, we are uh, we are committed to uh, making trying to convert a lot of our grants into um, uh, in, into being funded this year uh, grant writing has been a, a, a particular um, um, a, a particular challenge, I would say, in this time and age with COVID-19, but we, uh, we're happy to report that we're making some progress with the grant writing process. And, uh, and finally, and last but not least, 
we um, we would uh, would just like to say thank you because without your participation as an ag teacher, an educator, uh, an FFA member, um, our organization would not be as successful as it has been this year in year 2020. So we're going through some unbelievably challenging times. Uh, we're very pleased in, in, in the direction the State Association staff uh, leadership has taken this foundation. We feel like uh, the best is yet to come and we feel like we're very privileged to be working with such a great, uh, a great group of young folks. Uh, thank you. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. All right, thank you, Jerry. Uh, Samantha Earhart, president of the LATA, I have you next on the agenda. Hey everyone, I just wanted to give an update. As of right now, our LATA conference is still on. It's at the end of July. Um, I recently updated uh, on the weekly update that we do have rooms still in the block and they close on June 29th. Um, right now, I don't see a need to cancel it, but we'll continue to watch it just with our social distancing efforts and everything that goes into place. Also, our Region 2 conference that was in New Mexico this summer um, has been canceled, but we will conduct regional meetings through a Zoom, um, and there's more information coming out in the following weeks. Um, everything has, I guess, been okay. I've been in contact with Mr. Mates, our lobbyist, and um, just about everything coming out when they do start session back up, and so we're trying to stay on top of that right now. Thank you, Samantha. All righty. All right, uh, Ms. Marcy Mahler's in here. I'd ask her to speak about the Hall of Fame uh, to kind of dovetail with the LATA update. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just wanted to remind you that we are taking applications or nominations for the Ag Teacher Hall of Fame. Um, we are going to proceed with giving those awards at LATA, so we're going to ask you to have them turned in by the first week of June. Um, that way, as a committee, we can proceed forward just like as if we were attending state convention that first week and could um, judge applications and so on and so forth. So if you could um, think back to people in your area and get those nominations in, uh, the application can be found on the LAFFA LA website under the LATA link. Thank you. Thank you, Marcy. I've asked the president, or excuse me, the chairman of the CDE board to, to meet with us next week to outline the CDE revision processes. And I, I, I think they're gonna follow this same model that, that you're saying for Hall of Fame. I think we're gonna follow the same timeline as if we were at convention the first week of June. I don't wanna put words in Mr. Wade's mouth. He's supposed to be meeting with the CDE board and getting a plan together, but he'll be here next week to outline uh, where we go with CDE revision processes. Next, I have Dr. Kristen Starr, who's gonna update us on Ag Science Fair. Hey everybody, good morning. Um, I sent an email out to the list, so hopefully you guys all received that. Um, Agri Science Fair, we are going to try to kind of handle it business as usual. So we are hoping that we'll be able to have our Agri Science Fair at State FFA Convention in August. One of the things we are running into is that uh, we have a very, very, very quick turnaround from our state contest to uh, when those applications are due for nationals. Um, National FFA Agri Science Fair Committee meets every summer. They go through all the proposals. Uh, they sort the proposals and rank them and decide which of the state winners will be progressing on to nationals. So um, they have pushed that back this year with everything happening and all the state conventions getting pushed back. But they have requested that our state winners be sent to them um, by August 7th, I believe that is correct. Kay, you can um, feel free to jump in and correct me if I'm wrong about that. 
Um, we were hoping to get it pushed back to the 15th, but they need it by the 7th. So what we're going to do is we're going to run AgriScience Fair just like we normally would. Um, if we have a large number of participants, which I think we might this year, since we have a lot of students that are working on projects at home, we may have some applicants that maybe weren't able to get their reports done um, before now may be able to. Uh, we will have multiple judges this year to accommodate that. We will have AgriScience Fair within a two hour window. And then once the winners are announced, uh, we will have a session where um, those winners will be able to meet with the judges to get feedback on what they need to change on their applications and their scientific reports before they submit it to nationals. We'll have some computers and other things set up so that you can actually submit your national applications at state convention. We wanna make sure that all of our state winners get their materials in and that those materials are ready for national competition. Um, we are asking that even though the contest won't be till state convention, we are asking that all scientific reports and applications be submitted by July 1. Um, what we are going to do with that extra time is I'm going to have all of my judges go through, actually mark up the manuscripts, the uh, scientific reports, and make sure that those are proofed and edited and they have given as much feedback as they can in advance. That way, as soon as we have our winners selected, we'll be able to turn around and hand them their manuscripts and their scientific reports so that those can be edited. The scientific reports are one of the biggest factors um, since nationals only evaluates by looking at those scientific reports. Whether our students make the cut to go to national convention really depends on the quality of that scientific report. So we want to do everything we can to give as much feedback and as many edits and try to get that exactly where it needs to be before um, it goes forward to nationals. We want you guys to be successful. Um, I did post a link. University of Florida has a really, really good resource for writing those scientific manuscripts. Um, so if you guys have students that are interested, but maybe they're a little lost on the paper writing process, I really encourage you to check that out. They have it broke down by all the different sections of the manuscript and show what needs to be in there. It's a really, really good tool for students that are new to writing papers. Um, in the past, our sections that really need the most work um, tend to be in that literature review. So that's something students can be working on now, even if their research isn't finished yet, they can start on that literature review. We wanna see that students have a really thorough understanding of the topic, and that's one of the ways that they measure that is looking at that lit review and making sure that they understand what's been done in the field before. Um, other than that, if you guys have any questions, I am always happy to help. If you have students that maybe want to try to do something at home, if I can help, I, I absolutely will with maybe giving you advice or helping you come up with some solutions. Um, what questions do you guys have for me as far as AgriScience Fair or uh, anything else I can help with related to that? Thank you, Dr. Starr. All right. Next, um, I have a short report before we get to Mr. Lejeune's. I believe his may be a little, little longer than mine. Um, next week, we will go to Microsoft Teams for this particular meeting. We'll be sending out a new link uh, in the update Sunday night. Um, so we won't be using Zoom moving forward for the, for the, uh, teacher meeting on Wednesday. We will continue to have the meetings, but we'll be moving it to a, to a different software platform. There's an online teacher news conference, uh, an online teacher conference in the, in the Ag Update that's pretty exciting. It's gonna be hosted. Um, the University of Florida has got the registration up. It's conducted using the digital format. It's actually during our original weekend convention, June 1st through the 3rd. More details are cited here on our uh, update that I sent out Sunday. I think one of our new teachers is applying to actually speak at the conference. I think David Cambry has applied to, to speak at the conference. I've also applied to speak Dr. Starr on our new teacher workshop that we hosted back in January. So we may be actually sharing some of our best practices that we've put together for our new teachers. So if you're a new teacher, if you have a new teacher in your district, uh, be sure to share with them that they should register for that conference. I'm going to paste some links in the chat bar.
to some online ag mechanics uh, websites that are out there from a webinar that I attended last week. I thought it was exceptionally good. Let's see if I can get that copied again. Um, if I was teaching right now, I would be struggling with the with the ag mechanics portion of, of my content. So I, I ran across some of these and, and copied them for you guys. Miller has some good stuff. National FFA has some some a lot of resources. Minnesota Ag Ed, as well as a, a STEM simulator that that looks really cool. I think I double pasted it here in the chat bar. I'll also send this to Mr. Lejeune and he'll he'll have those links on his weekly Wednesday update. I'd like to remind everybody that ICEV is free right now. If you look in the Ag Ed update from a couple weeks ago, you can see a link or you can just go to the ICEV website and sign up and get some free online resources with ICEV. Also, there's some upcoming uh, NAAE webinars. I'm gonna copy and paste those, a link to register for those. You do have to pre-register for their uh, events. It's a very simple process, but, but a lot of high quality online resources out there coming out of NAAE. I'll paste that in the chat bar and I'll send that to Mr. Uh, Lejeune as well. That concludes what I have taken notes on to, to discuss this week, and I will pass it over to Mr. Cade Lejeune. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Before I start, Dr. Crutchfield, do you have anything new from National FFA this week? Um, no, not anything horribly new. I do want to say happy Earth Day to everybody. So um, I also want to thank the state officers. You brought me to tears. I, I'm not a crying type of person, but to watch you guys do opening ceremonies just reminded me why we do all that we do. So thank you for that this morning. And I'm actually, I already sent the email to our staff telling them that we need to have the national officers do it for our all staff meetings because I think our entire um, company needs to see the young people doing what they do because it was, it was just really heartful. Thank you. Um, I think I told you last week that we had to make the call on New Century Farmer. If I didn't, I want to make sure that I put that out there. Um, they, we just, we couldn't, we couldn't do it. It was going to be in July, but we just, for the safety of those young people, if you had a student who was accepted to it, know that they will be able to participate in 2021. So we'll, we'll leave that open for them. Um, other things, uh, we started an owl chat last week. If you weren't a part of that, we do have the, um, I, we've got the video archived. So I can get that to Cade and he can put that link in his weekly update as well. Um, if you wanna watch it, we talked about how to engage your chapter members right now. Um, so there were some really good ideas that the we had teachers share that they were doing. And we talked about, um, let me see, what was the other thing? Virtual banquets. So some teachers you know, are, are trying to make that decision. So we've got some conversation and some strategies for you on that. The next one will be next week on the 29th, and we will be covering um, officer elections virtually because teachers are trying to decide if they're going to do that. So we've got a couple of teachers that have made that decision, and they're, so they're going to share what they're doing. Plus, we have staff that, um, if you're not, um, Eric Nelson that helps us run national officer elections. He's got some resources that he'll probably share that you may or may not be able to use depending on if students have connectivity. But so some of those strategies and then uh, how to train your teams virtually right now, because I know, you know, our students, they want to do something. And so besides the tablet and all the paperwork and everything they're doing for their core teachers. So we're going to have a couple of um, master teachers talk about how they're still engaging their students, continuing to practice for CDEs, um, just to kind of keep them engaged because, you know, we all know that's one of the reasons they come to us. Um, so that's really all I've got this week. Um, you all have your meeting on Wednesday and then we get all our information on Thursday. So I'm, you know, it's a day behind you guys. So nothing new really. Thanks. Thank you, Nina. I'm gonna share my screen because there's uh, several things on our website that I would like to share with you this week to show you where we're posting updated information. So let me pull that up. Um, 
And if you can see it, somebody let me know that, that it's been pulled up. Yes. All right. So we've gotten questions about state officer elections, state officer nominating committee. Our staff and state officers have had input on that. We're working on it. We are still going to hold state officer elections um, on time. So when we say on time, we're still planning to do state nominating committee on May 30th and 31st, but it will be virtual. It's gonna be through Zoom. I've reached out to the adults on the nominating committee. They've all uh, told me that they're still able and willing to do it. The big thing that we need to assess over the next few weeks, if you have candidates or if you have committee members, please find out if they have access to stable internet and a computer with a webcam. That's gonna be the requirement in order for candidates and committee members to participate. Uh, we will not put anyone in a situation where lack of access to internet or computer prevents them from running for state office. So if that's an issue, please let us know as soon as possible so that we can figure out a way to work around it and address it. The reason why we're still gonna do the state officer election on time is because students can't wait until the first week of August to find out if they're gonna be a state officer or not. They have life decisions that they're gonna have to be making as far as college and school and jobs go that they need to know on time. They also, the, the new state officer team is gonna have their first training scheduled virtually the week after our normal June convention date. Uh, we also more than likely will still have the state officer summit that's normally in Washington, D.C. If I had to guess, Dr. Crutchfield, you can correct me on this, but if I had to guess, that's probably going to be a virtual uh, meeting. Also, we need our new state officers in place by then so that they can participate in the national delegate process. So we have to figure out a way to get this done on time. We're confident that this Zoom platform through LSU's platform is going to be the, the most effective way of doing that. There will be a mandatory training for all state officer candidates that's going to be held virtually on april 30th that's a thursday we purposefully did that the day before the state's lockdown order is supposed to lift that way if the order is lifted on may 1st and everyone runs around like crazy people because they can finally go outside uh, they wouldn't miss the training so it's going to be held on thursday april 30th again all state officer candidates are required to participate we need to find out if they're going to have connectivity issues through the internet um, so please get that info to us so we can help you out. Now, keep in mind, the state officer application was pushed back this year to May 15th. So even if the candidate has not started an application, if they haven't turned it in yet, they still need to participate on April 30th. The reason why is because Caitlin and Sarah are going to be teaching them about the rounds that we're going to be using in nominating committee. They're also going to be um, showing them the, the virtual platform that's going to be used. So if the candidate doesn't participate on April 30th, they're going to be at a major disadvantage when it comes time for the committee process. And very likely they're going to have issues trying to get through it at the end of May. So again, if you know that you're going to have a state officer candidate, please share these dates with them so that they can participate. While we're preparing, we're creating content that's being placed on our website. So let me show you where that's going. So here on the rotator, first off, I'll come back to this one in just a second. We've created a new page for state officer candidates for training resources. We haven't put a whole lot on it yet. Uh, the first thing that we've uploaded to it is the information on that officer training that I was telling you about. Again, Sarah and Caitlin have put a lot of work into this so far. So if you go to that document, You'll find the different rounds that we're planning to do during the nominating committee. We're pretty confident that we can still do the vast majority of our normal nominating committee minus the written test. Um, it's just not going to be possible to do a written test this year virtually. Uh, so we're going to cut that one out. So again, you can find this page here on the rotator. You can also find it directly on the state officer page. So if you click on association, scroll down to student leadership, and click on state officers. And if you scroll down, that's where that page is gonna be found right above their applications and their documents. So you'll be able to access it there. Please direct all of your state officer candidates to that page so that they'll get the most up-to-date information on the process. We are still going to have campaign speeches and elections will still happen the first week of June. Uh, we'll hope to start on Monday, June 1st. We may have to extend it over a few days depending on how the technology works. We do have access to technology that's going to allow us to do a virtual election statewide as we perfect that uh, plan. 
we'll share that with you to make sure that your, your delegates are aware of what the procedure will be. We're also going to hold practices in the month of May for everyone in the state to practice using the election technology so that we can be sure that uh, all of you will have access to it, that it's gonna be successful. As far as convention goes, we're working on revising the schedule. We have been in contact with all of the host hotels, with all of our meeting space, with the Riverfront Center of getting everything moved over to August. Um, we're going to release the revised schedule in the middle of May. We're also gonna release the revised registration and housing info in the middle of May. I will say we've had questions about this. All of your hotel reservations from June have been canceled by the hotels. So we're gonna be starting over whenever this opens up in early June. The reason why is because the hotels were concerned that with changes in reservations and you know, clearly we're gonna have different numbers of people that are gonna attend in August than we would have had in June. Um, it would have been more cumbersome and complicated to try to transfer stuff over and then change reservations again versus just have you re-reserve it over again. Um, so if you haven't gotten a, a cancellation from them, you may get one but regardless, you'll have to redo that again. So more or less in early June, our entire registration process will start over just like we're at the end of February or the beginning of March. Um, it's just backing up our entire schedule. A few things that we know that we're planning for, all of our spring CDEs that we missed in March and April were tentatively, and I say tentatively, none of this has been confirmed, but this is what we're hoping for, would be to schedule those for Monday, August 3rd, and then our normal convention CDEs like farm business management and food science would take place on Tuesday, August 4th. And then starting that evening of the 4th, we would start with all of our award sessions and banquets like we normally would and run through. I think that we can fill all of our convention schedule in and be done by about three o'clock on Thursday, August 6th, um, as long as we keep moving along with the schedule. The only thing that we'll have to cut out of this will be area officer elections and nominating committee. That's not gonna be able to happen at convention. We just won't have time for it. We don't have a decision made on, um, on anything revised as far as area officer elections yet. We're still working on it. Something else that I wanna show you on our website, if you go to the home page, you go up to the rotator and you scroll over this new COVID-19 update, if you click on it, all of the updates to the schedule that are going to be released, all of the current information on summer programs that have been delayed is being posted here. So you can find updated convention info. Here's the state officer, NOMCOM and elections information that we just discussed. Here's the information on CDEs that we just discussed. Something else to keep in mind for award applications. I, I discovered last week, I think a lot of students don't realize that we're still taking award applications this year. So please make sure your students know that they can still apply for all of our normal awards that we would do during the springtime. Everything's just delayed. So again, register your applications by May 5th. You have to email them directly to me by May 6th. That includes proficiency, state degrees, state star awards, livestock exhibition, and national chapter. We're not requiring any signatures on any of those applications. Most of those only have an electronic signature at this point anyway, and the electronic signature is only required if you win state and if you move on to participate at the national level. Um, so complete the application, minus the signatures, get them emailed over to me in a PDF form and we'll get those processed and sent out. If you're still willing to be a judge for these applications, I still need more teachers to volunteer, please email me and let me know. Uh, we hope to start sharing that information over the next couple of weeks uh, regarding who's going to be assigned to which uh, application. The only difference to that deadline is that state officer applications, American degrees, and American Star Awards are going to be due by May 15th. For those, for the American degree and the American Star Award, you do have to electronically sign them. And then on the electronic signature page, there is a button that says submit to state. Please make sure when the student is done and the signatures are there electronically that you submit it to the state level. If you don't submit it to the state level, I can't see the application. And when I go to forward it to nationals, your student will be left out. We had that happen to a couple of students last year with American degrees. They did the whole application, got it signed, but didn't submit it and I didn't see it. So please make sure they submit to state so that we can push theirs on to the national level. They'll be due on May 15th. That gives us some time. National FFA will look at those applications and if there's any major issues with them, they send it back to us so that your student can correct it um, so that they can be awarded their American degree and not be disqualified. As Dr. Starr said, um, Ag Science Fair applications should be emailed to her 
by July 1st. Tentatively, we're scheduling Ag Science Fair to take place at State Convention on August 5th. Again, that's tentative. I don't have an exact time yet, uh, but that is our hope to be able to do it then. And then we decided this week that we're going to back up the deadline for area officer applications and area NOMCOM to August 1st, um, simply because, again, at the earliest, we're not going to be electing area officers until August. So there was no point having them turn that in in the middle of May. Um, a few other updates, membership rosters for this year. I need you to have them completely done by May 1st because we have to submit to nationals about a week after that. We, we need to get our roster done. We were on track to probably crack 11,500 members this year until all the schools shut down. So if you have any students left that need to be on your roster, please go ahead and add them and we'll get that submitted. We did see a membership increase this year, so that's good. We're still growing. We're going in a positive direction. Uh, if you have any more kids to put on your rosters, please make sure you do that. Annual reports for this school year are going to be due to us by September 1st. National FFA backed up the deadline for states to submit. This should give you time to get back to school in August, get all of your data compiled, put your annual report together. Please remember the annual report is so important because this is the only way that Dr. Smith and I have to gather data on our program. This is the only way that we know how many students are in ag, how many FFA members we have, what pathways they're in, and we share all of this information with the legislature, with the Department of Ed, with Bessie, with the foundation, with all of our stakeholders. This is the only way for us to know who our students are and who you are. So please make sure you get those annual reports turned in. And then again, uh, dates for camp and area nomcom are still to be determined. We're working on those. Does anyone have questions on updated schedules? I know that's a whole lot. That's why I'm going to keep it here on the website. We're also going to share all of this over social media um, so that students have access to it also. I have a few other things for you. The American Legion Scholarship is now open. I finally got in touch with, uh, with the Legion about the scholarship this year. It will close on May 15th. If you go to the scholarship page on our website, you'll get access to the scholarship application. It's a $1,000 scholarship for an incoming freshman that will go to school in Louisiana. Uh, so please get your students to fill it out. The Ron Mayu Scholarship is currently being judged. We sent those off to the Mayu family earlier this week, so they should have a, a winner selected for us probably by the end of this week. There's a new scholarship that's just been posted on our website to Southern University for students who want to major in their College of Agriculture. Students can earn up to $10,000 per year to, the, to Southern if they are gonna be an agriculture student through this scholarship. So please, if you have students who are interested in attending Southern, who are interested in agriculture, have them apply for that scholarship. We have also appointed our four delegate committees for this year. I'll pull those up and show you where that information is gonna be. The area officers ranked the delegate work. So if you go to the association tab, click on student leadership, scroll down the delegate process, and then click on committees. These are our four committees for this year. So it's the SAE and AET opportunities from Benton, the task force for uh, improving areas of, uh, for students with special needs, the committee for running off the floor for state NOMCOM, and the committee on eliminating early registration for affiliated chapters. Those were the four that the area officers voted as the most important. They will be the four committees at state convention. We'll be sending out more information on that as the area officers um, put their leadership groups together and start asking questions about each issue. We'll share those with you. We also have state officers have been doing virtual workshops. We are posting those on our website also. So again, if you go to association and if you go down to student leadership, scroll down, you'll see the link. This will take you to the YouTube page. Salem Johnson did a workshop this past Sunday. Victoria Higdon's going to do one this Sunday. We're sharing the registration for that on social media. So please get your students out so that they can participate. It was really fun with Salem last Sunday. I think Victoria's will be just as good. Um, we're still trying to find ways of, of reaching out to students. David Cambry did a grant webinar yesterday. That's also been posted online. So if you go to the LATA tab, and if you scroll down to curriculum webinars, there's his grant writing workshop that we filmed yesterday. Um, one more thing I wanna show you, in addition to the website, if you go to our YouTube channel, me take you to it. 
If you go to our YouTube channel, Lainey has done a lot of work here the past few weeks of getting our channel cleaned up and prettied up. If you go to the channel and you click on playlists, now you can find all of our videos cataloged in a much more easy to use fashion. So all of the curriculum webinars going back to 2017, the workshops that the state officers are doing, these teacher updates that we've been filming, the virtual lessons that teachers have been filming, um, our digging deeper episodes, the alumni films, all of those are now cataloged here on YouTube in a much more easy to use manner. So I would highly recommend that you check those out um, and utilize them for your personal use and also for your students. I think that's all I've got. I know that's a whole lot. Does anyone have any questions at all? There's no questions. I would like to remind everyone that we're having an online CDE next Thursday and the registration closes next Wednesday night and it is free to all who participate but there will be a $5 penalty for those who register and do not participate. The, the association is paying the bill for this online contest. It's not free, but we, we don't want to charge folks up front to participate. We don't want folks, we do not want folks registering and taking up a spot uh, and not showing up and actually participating. So we're, we're taking these online contests for, for a training run. I think it's very beneficial for anyone interested in nursery and landscape and meet ID. To, to have some kids log in. If you're a teacher and you want to log in and take the contest, by, by all means, uh, we invite you to do that. I get an email every day on how many people have registered. Um, we've got about 75 spots open for the contest next week. So we're going to advertise it on social media. We're going to advertise it through this uh, format as well and also on our email, but it's, it's up to you guys to get your students to, to register. Those who register will get an email According to the email that was put into the registration website, we will send out the passcodes through that. So I'll just copy and paste those email addresses in the Outlook and send the passcode on Thursday morning next week to anyone who registered. So if you registered a student and put your email address in there, you'll be the one getting the passcode and you'll need to forward that uh, to the student. So just wanted to put that as a reminder uh, before we go. I want to Thank everyone for coming in and last call for any questions. If there are none, you can feel free to leave. Good job, Mr. Lejeune.